Welcome to Periodic Trends. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what some trends are for certain properties that we can observe in the periodic table. This lesson is intended to be a review of what we did in class, so you can skip ahead or skip through it as you need to. At the end of the video, I'll go through and do explanations uh, for each of the trends more in depth. But for the first pass through, we're just going to talk about what the trends actually are and not spend a lot of time on the explanation. So our first trend is atomic size. So atomic size uh, is actually measured by something called atomic radius. And to figure out what the atomic radius is, we basically look at an element, so an atom and an element, and I've got two over here, representative spheres for my atoms. We look at two adjacent atoms, and we basically take the distance from the center of one to the center of the other. So that distance divided by two is called the atomic radius. Now sometimes these are overlapping a little bit, which is why it's not just from the center to the edge. So what happens to the atomic radius as we move across a period or move down a group? What happens to the atomic size? Well, let's look at going down a group first. As we go down a group first, the atoms get larger, so the atomic size increases. That should make sense because we're just adding on more protons and more neutrons and more electrons all the way through. It's getting much physically larger. But as we move across a period, left to right, something interesting happens. The atomic size decreases. These are the trends for atomic size on the periodic table. The next property we're going to look at is ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy needed to remove one electron from an atom. Basically, it's the amount of energy needed to make a cation, which is our positive ion, a cation. So let's look at the trends. As we go down a group, the ionization energy decreases. Okay, it becomes easier to make a cation. As we go across a period left to right, the ionization energy increases. It becomes harder to make a cation. This is the trend for ionization energy. The next trend is electronegativity. Electronegativity is an atom's pull on another atom's electrons. So it's really only relevant when we're looking at a compound, when there's two elements or two atoms in a molecule. We want to know how much each atom is pulling on the other atom's electrons. Let's look at an example to sort of get an idea of this. If we have carbon and oxygen atoms in a molecule, carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen has six. So the strength that carbon is able to pull on one of oxygen's electrons is the electronegativity of carbon. As we go down a group, electronegativity decreases. As we go across a period, electronegativity gets higher. It increases. In fact, fluorine is our most electronegative element. It has an electronegativity of 4.0. Now, the noble gases don't have an electronegativity because they don't pull on another atom's electrons at all. They don't want any more electrons. If you follow the trend, it should make sense that cesium down here has a very low electronegativity, uh, 0.7, as compared to fluorine's 4.0, which is the highest possible electronegativity. We're going to talk about electronegativity a lot more when we talk about bonding. That wraps up our review of what some of the trends are that we can observe on the periodic table. I'm now going to go through each one and talk about how, why those trends are the way they are uh, in a way that will let you sort of reason through um, why these trends exist and why some things increase and why some things decrease. For these explanations, I'm going to be referencing the concept of Z-effective, which is something we talked about a couple videos ago. And if you look in the description of this video, you'll see a link back to that one if you want to refresh your memory about what Z-effective is. 
in a nutshell, Z effective uh, represents how the protons, the nuclear charge, is modified, their strength is modified in a negative way by the number of shielding electrons or non-valence electrons. So now let's go through and explain some of this using this idea of Z effective and shielding electrons versus how many protons are pulling on electrons. First up is atomic size. Atomic size increases as you go down a group because you're adding on an entirely new principal energy level. So that expands phys the physical distance of the electrons away from the nucleus. That's pretty straightforward. But the reason that it decreases as you move across has more to do with this idea of Z effective. So what happens is this. As you move across a period, so let's take period three for example. We go from sodium to magnesium to aluminum, so on and so forth. However, as we move across here, we are increasing the number of protons, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so on and so forth. That means we're increasing the strength of the nucleus. It is pulling with much more positive force. And the amount of shielding is not changing. This entire row all have 10 non-valence electrons. But what's happening is, because the shielding is not changing as we go from left to right, but the positive force from the nucleus is getting stronger, it's pulling in those outer electrons even closer. So the overall size of the atom gets smaller because as we move across, you get a stronger nuclear charge which pulls in all the electrons just a little bit closer and so the overall size goes down. Now let's look at ionization energy. Let's look at why ionization energy decreases as we go down a group. So why is it easier to remove that electron? Well, the outermost electron is further away as you go down this group from the nucleus. So because it's further away physically, it's easier to just pluck right off. Now if we consider going across a period, okay, it increases. It is harder. And for the same reason we talked about with atomic size. We go across the period. The nuclear charge gets stronger, so the nucleus is exerting more of a positive force pulling in on those outer electrons, attracting those outer electrons coming in. And as we go across, that attractive force gets stronger. So if the nucleus is holding on much more strongly on the right side, because there's more of a nuclear charge, it's going to take more energy, it's going to be harder to pull off that one electron. So ionization energy increases as we go left to right. Now let's look at electronegativity. Electronegativity in this case is basically going to represent uh, exactly what we just talked about. Okay? Oxygen, so here's our example again, oxygen and carbon. Oxygen is going to have a higher electronegativity than carbon because it has more protons, more of a nuclear charge. It will be pulling on carbon's electrons more strongly than carbon's six protons can pull on oxygen's electrons. So it's very straightforward for electronegativity, much like ionization energy. Uh, you just have more of a nuclear charge as we go left to right. The ability to pull on electrons weaken as you go down, again for a similar reason, the nucleus is just further away from another atom uh, because there's all those electrons in between. As you get to much larger atoms down here, the nucleus is just further away, so it can't pull as strongly. So we see a decrease in electronegativity. So this idea of Z effective, if you can keep this in mind, will help you figure out any of the trends fairly easily without having to memorize them. You can just reason through why they are the way they are.